Hello and welcome back to a new video in my C++ tutorial series here on the Ludwig Fusel channel. In the last video we have written ourselves a own container class, the linked list. The linked list allowed us to store many elements of a certain type that we can define by a template argument. Now again, this template argument wasn't 100% nice. If we would remove the pointer here, it wouldn't work because uh, we can't really store pets in there because pets are like a virtual class. They are not uh, able to be created. Uh, you were also not able to store reference in here even through I haven't shown this to you. The problem with references are that you would end up with trip reference and you would need template magic, which would be way too advanced for the thing. But for any general purpose type and pointer types, it's a good thing. Actually, the SAD library containers can't even store references. They also need pointers. So yeah, that's the whole idea here of uh, the linked list and everything worked good and everything is nice, but I also pointed you to an error or an issue that we have. The biggest issue that we have is that one for loop um, because the for loop uses the array operator, which uses the add function, which means that on the first loop iteration, we need zero pointer follow or zero iteration through the list. And at the first element, we need one iteration, the second element, two iterations, because we always start from zero. And we need to go until to that index value that we're going to give in here to get access to the element. And that's something that we want to solve here today. There are also more things that we're going to solve. We're going to solve that we are not following the big five and currently we are not safe to use the link and listen like copying and moving because it would break now um Let's actually uh, start with the very straightforward issue or the issue that we talked about last video, the issue that we uh, need computation types for here. So every time we access the array operator, we need uh, exactly, it's like an operation of n, or in this case i, which it takes off the time. It's dependent on the input value. And that's normally fine. The normal array and add operator, they always take this time. However, when we are using them in a the context of a for loop, we can accelerate it because the for loop starts at a certain position and ends at a certain position. Or it starts at the beginning and stops at the end. And if you have these conditions, you can accelerate this by um, changing your code a bit. Now, normally you could just say, okay, I'm going to expose this element. The element is inside of the the private struct that could expose this element, make this one public and make a uh, function that exposes the first element. And then you could normally iterate over with the next pointer and get access to all the elements. But this gives us a problem. This is actually leaking our class. You have direct access to the next pointers. You can modify the next pointers. You can modify the storage, um, which you might want to do. But yeah, to get the idea. Like the idea is to not give access to the internal element structure. The idea is we just have an... Uh, and an, an, an array, a linked list, if we want to access it quite normally, we don't want to expose what's in there. We don't really want to change that. We don't want to expose the element. And this is where a so called concept of iterators comes in. Now, an iterator is a, a special class, where in general, like the iterator is, of course, a class, but the general idea is that you have an iterator object and the iterator object is an object which is meant to iterate over the container. So the iterator iterates over the, for example, linked list. It allows you to move forward and backward through the list or just forward or just backward through the list, access the elements and move it along the list. So it's kind of like a class that is using the information of the element that knows how an element looks like and uses that information to gain access to... Mm, uh, to the kind of like internals of the element and, and use the element. So yeah, the idea here is that you write a class here. Now this class is public because it's meant to be used outside of it. And it's going to be the class iterator. And because it's a class, it means that we are uh, encapsulating data, which means that I'm going to, again, going to have something public. And I'm going to have something private in here. By default private, the iterator is going to point to a element, so element is going to be equal to by default null pointer, and that's all good. So now we have an iterator, which by default uses the null pointer. I do want to be able to use it, but what I also want to be able to is I also want to be able to uh, specify an element during construction. So if I want to start at the first element, I do of course want to provide this uh, for the constructor, so element here. And this is going to be the 
M element is going to be based on the element to be constructible and everything is good. Now, uh, destructor, we don't need one because the element is just a normal pointer. It's not something that is managed. It's just a, kind of like a reference. Actually, if it would be 100% safe, we could also put this as a reference. However, um, the concept of iterators is different. You actually need the pointer here because the last element is a null pointer and we don't have null references. And uh, so we would not be able to actually display these. Now, uh, Iterator has several features that it needs to support. So first of all, an Iterator needs to support moving forward and backward through the, the actual list or the container. So what I'm going to write is avoid forward to move forward um, and no, like that. And I also want to implement a void backward for moving backward through the list. Now forward is straightforward. On forward, we just say m element equals m element next. So we're going to gain access to the next one. But moving backward is not straightforward because we don't have a way to find ourselves back. Now what you could do is you could just say, all right, I'm going to be fine with that. I don't want to move backward through the list, uh, which in our case would be the way to go because our list just supports forward linking. We just always link to the next element, not to the previous one, which means that we couldn't even implement backwards iteration with an iterator. Um, I want to change this actually. I do want to show you how you write a list that you can also um, uh, be build it backwards. So now a double linked list is in a normal linked list is just having a pointer to the next one. A double linked list is also going to have a pointer to the previous element. So we're going to have a next and a previous element. Now the only thing that we need to do is we actually need to implement this because previous currently is not set. Um, we do need to change this on erasing and appending because appending we need to kind of like point to the last one and uh, on deletion we need to make sure that all back pointing so that if we remove an element if this one has a next one that this back pointing pointer is set correctly let's start on appending so as you can see we are creating this new element and this uh, new element is stored here at the insertion position so insertion position is equal to the element but before we are gonna do this I'm actually gonna say that the element itself that its previous pointer is is going to be the uh, insertion position, which is an element pointer pointer. So I'm going to dereference that one. So the idea here is that I'm going to actually get the value of the next pointer, which is actually null pointer. So we can't do this. I need to make sure that we do this properly. So what I am going to do, I'm starting at the first one and then I am going to move forward. And the insertion position itself is at some point going to be a null pointer or the value is going to be a null pointer. So actually we need to store the storage, which actually requires us to also have an element pointer, which is the previous element. Well, actually, we do not even need to do this in here. We just need to do this inside the while loop before we are setting this. We actually need to set the element's previous pointer to the uh, the referenced insertion position, so um, kind of like the pointer to the next element. We're going to set this in here, so it starts with null pointer if the linked list is empty. If we have a first element, the previous element is going to be the first element, and then we're going to move along, and we're going to always have the last valid element stored in the previous one, which is exactly what we want to do to um, have it stored in here correctly. Now, we could try this out quickly if this works by putting a breakpoint in here and quickly starting this up and take a look at this which should give us our linked list which should have a first pointer which uh, has a next pointer but the uh, previous pointer should be null pointer because the first element does not have a previous one which in general means that from the linked list here we never went into that uh, while loop in here which means that this remains null pointer but the next element should not have a next one, but it should have a previous one. And the previous one should actually uh, have a next pointer, which is correct. And the next pointer should again have a previous one. And we should be able to go to next previous, uh, next previous to infinity because it's kind of like a circular loop that we have in here. And that's correct because you can see like the first one. It's not having a previous one, it's having a next one. The second one does not have a next one, but it has a previous one. And the previous one is actually, again, the cat, because um, it's kind of like the element that we inserted first.
So that's working here. Now we just need to implement this when we are removing them. Now uh, removing them is inside of erase function. You can see that we are fixing the next linking. So you can see that the referenced element equals next, which uh, is basically setting the uh, the next one intact. And now the only thing left to do is actually to go to the next one. So if the next one exists, because next one could be a null pointer, if the next one exists, we just want to say that next previous is the referenced element. Because element, the uh, no, the referenced element is actually a pointer to a pointer. Mm. We are the, we need to do this uh, above here to actually get access to that. So the element is the next element, and um, if the next one is existing, the previous is not the element because the element has been deleted. It's gonna be the elements previous or actually the the referenced elements previous one uh, to kind of like fix these so the element is the one that we remove so the previous one from the next one is gonna be the previous one from the current element which kind of like means that we are skipping the element here with the previous linking and then down here we are deleting the actual element and then we are setting the element pointer to be the next one which fixes forward linking and this is now looking quite confusing, but that's okay. Um, I do want to make this and comment this a bit. So this is one is actually the seek the element. We're going to refactor this, this class a hell of a lot when we are done with the features of today's video. So this is kind of like seeking the element. This is now getting next pointer. This is fixing backward linking of next element and this one is the deletion of element and this one is fixing forward linking and then we have like here this this count stuff so that's like the idea of that one the function is going to a bit more complicated and we're going to yeah rework this in the future let me quickly add a few more oscars and let me maybe uh, do an L arrays at the position of levels of zero one two let's go to the position two and see if the chain is valid if the chain would not be valid we would end up with pointers that point to invalid memory so really what i just look is if every element is looking good so the first one we have three in here that's good the first one is not having a previous one but it's having a next one the next one is having a next the previous one the previous one is valid the next one is valid which has no next one but it has a previous one which is also valid which i should be able to follow the previous two times again to end up at the null to the first element which is good so we have like a cat and it goes on and this actually shows me that the link list is intact and everything with the backward linking works and now that i have backwards linking in here we can change the code in here and say m element equals m element previous one which now allows us to go forward and backward now um uh, forward and backward is quite nice however um, for an iterator we always like to uh, implement the operators as well so um, an iterator should be able to be incremented so incremented with not calling the forward function or decremented not by calling the backward function it is common practice that you use the plus plus operator and the minus minus operator to move the iterator along which um, is actually implemented like that i have opened up the c plus plus documentation you can see that we have this plus plus a a plus plus minus minus a and a minus minus these are the four operators that we want to support the one is the pre-increment and the other one is the post increment pre-increment means increment the value first and then return the reference so increment it then give me the value post uh, increment means give me the value and then increment it this also works for uh, decrementing so first decrement then give me the value or post decrement um, which is in general give me the value and then decrement now the difference is that if you are incrementing and then returning the value that you can return a reference while if you are uh, incrementing uh, after you are returning the value so you kind of like want to get the old value and then increment you actually need to get a copy um this is why they are looking a bit different you can see that the um the ones that actually uh 
give you the old state, they are giving you a T and not a reference, so they give you like a copy of how it was before we uh, incremented. And you can see that the operator is written with an in parameter. This in parameter is not used. It's just to kind of like uh, show that you actually mean the post increment, the post decrement by adding the int as a parameter. I know that this is not 100% clean. And I personally don't like this syntax that you need to put in an int here. And the, the thing is, there's no way around this because the operator are looking the same. It's always operator and then the syntax. This is just a way to differentiate between them, kind of like... A design flaw in the C++ language is something that I haven't said in like a while. Um, because I think there are very, very few design flaws in C++, but there are ones. This is one that this doesn't work. Um, but it's solved by adding like a dummy argument in here, which is not doing anything. So yeah. Let's write them. So the first one is like the T reference, which is actually now not a T. It's actually an iterator. Iterator reference operator plus plus, which is the uh, the pre increment operator. Now what this one is going to do is it is going to call the forward. It's incrementing, calling forward, and then returning the reference. This reference itself. The same thing works for um, the operator minus minus. So operator minus minus is calling backward. And returning a dereference this reference. And now we just need to copy and paste these functions over and implement this one for uh, post increments. So how post in general works is that you're creating yourself a copy. You're uh, basically like, we could just call this copy and say this is equal to dereference self, which is going to create a copy of that. Then we're going to call forward and then we can return the copy, which is how, working like that. It's looking a bit... Uh, ugly you could also replace this one with an iterate with the iterator keyword but yeah you should at some point also just use auto because it makes things easier same idea is here we could copy paste this one and then get backward in here but the idea is still the same just need to add the int in here to have the dummy argument you're getting an o copy you're modifying the current state you are returning d1 uh, only difference of course this is not a reference that's important and that one is also not a reference this now allows us to get an iterator and to move it along now we of course need a way to create iterators and there are two ways to create iterators or actually two main things that you need to implement first of all in general you're never going to create an iterator by passing an element in, in here by your main so what you're not doing is you're not creating like a linked list um, actually you don't need the pet manager here i don't know why i have added this here i can just do pet here so what you're never going to do is you're never going to create an iterator like that and say iterator and then like put a pointer in here because you never get access to that one the default one could be created but you're never going to get access to that one you're always going to get your iterator by calling a function on the linked list and um, the functions that you want to call they are always they are called begin Begin is one function. Begin is one function that you want to have for accessing your iterators. I'm uh, intentionally uh, not capitalizing this because you, um, if you capitalize them, it's going to work, of course, because you can name your functions however you like them. But if you are not capitalizing them, I'm going to show you an advantage of that. But I'm going to show this to you in the future. Now let's first write actually a function, this begin function. The begin function is going to be quite simple. Let's write them down here somewhere, maybe there. Something like that. So how does a begin function work? Well, it's an iterator that we're going to get. And the function is called begin. Now, uh, how does the function begin work? First of all, like let's maybe say this is an inline iterator. And really what you do is you're going to create an iterator out of the first point. You have the first element and you create an iterator out of that. If I do this like that, it would work. I can make a breakpoint. Oh, let's actually, oh, I didn't want to remove everything. I do want to remove that one. And now I would be able to take a look at the iterator. And the iterator, you can see, has this element stored, which is actually the first element, which has a next pointer, but no previous. And in the storage, we have a cat in here, which is uh, tabby. If we would go to the next one, we would have like Oscar in here. There he is. Now, um, of course, you want to use these and you want to use iterators to actually iterate over that. So what you want to do is something like write a while, while loop. Currently, I'm just going to write a while true loop to 
uh, just show you how you use them. And while this is working, you basically kind of call like iterator forward to move forward or to make this easier, iterator plus plus or actually call the faster function plus plus it because plus plus it is calling the um, the pre-increment and the pre-increment you can see is just incrementing and returning a reference while this one is creating a copy uh, calling the forward internally and then returning the copy and if you are not storing the copy somewhere it is more expensive to call the plus plus function this is more expensive in general than that one however if you turn on your compilers optimizations which they are on default if you are going to release the compiler is probably detecting that you are not using the return value and if you're not using the return value it says all right i don't need that return statement all right if i don't need the return statement i don't need the copy well i'm just going to call forward and the same thing here if you would call the other one it's also detecting that you don't need the return value which in general also just boils down to calling forward so in general if you optimize them it's probably it doesn't matter a good compiler should always reduce the score to just calling the forward function on the iterator but in general you're going to see that people tend to call plus plus it because it is in general faster even your debug builds may should maybe be fast because if your debug builds are slow and you have big data that you are debugging um, and it's not optimized away then plus plus is of course slower than uh, plus plus it or it plus plus is lower than plus plus it. So in general, if you can use plus plus always. If you're having a normal size T or an integer like the I here, plus plus is totally fine. Even through like many people out of good conventions always have plus plus I there as well. Or here. I personally prefer the I plus plus syntax because if you have an index that's called C, you can write C plus plus. Ha ha ha. No, that's not the case. Why I like it, but I personally like grew up with like I plus plus from Java and stuff. So I tend to always use I plus uh, plus only if I really on iterators, I, I, I really do it and write them different. Now let's actually go in here and see what's happening there. And let's see what we got. So as you can see, we are now in here. The iterator has been created. The iterator is pointing to the uh, tabby. Now, if I uh, hit F10 and go through that, you can actually see that the iterator is changing as soon as we incremented it, which is now pointing to Oscar. And as you can see, we should have three Oscars in here. So this should work three times. So let's increment it again. Okay, another one, again an Oscar. Um, the element has changed. The next, the previous has changed. The storage has, has not changed because storage is the same, the same pointer, but it's a different ele element. So let's continue on incrementing it again. And you can see again, the element has changed, but the storage has not. And if we would increment this um, um, Again, you can see that it works, but now the storage is no longer valid because the iterator is pointing to an uh, M element of null, which is basically giving you an issue because uh, yeah, the data inside here is null and you would no longer be able to access the storage, but the iterator is still valid. So if I would continue again, if I would now increment, now we would gonna have an issue because now we have a null pointer uh, a, a exception in general because you now try to access the M element and get its next one, so it doesn't work. So clearly what you can see is um, that iterator and iterator as we have written it now doesn't work. Now, how would you implement this? Now, there are multiple ways of doing that. One way would be of um, implementing a function of the iterator if it's valid or a Boolean operator. And then you could say while like iterator, while iterator, which currently doesn't work, but I could like write a bool operator. And while this iterator is kind of like valid and inside of the bool operator, you would check for a null pointer. It's valid while it's not null pointer, then your function would go on and everything would be fine. However, this is not how you do it. Um, iterators in general work a bit different. Iterators work like a range. You're always going to have a begin iterator and an end iterator of a container which is like spanning over the full range of the container. However, you, you could, and personally, you could actually uh, generate a subrange of iterators for yourself. So you could get, for example, the first iterator of a container and or the begin iterator of the container. It's called begin and end, begin and end of the container. They are both going to be iterators. And what you can do, you can take the begin iterator, increment this iterator 10 times, but store yourself the initial begin iterator. And then you could kind of like iterate from the begin iterator to the iterator plus 10 increments and iterate over a subrange of the container. So you're never going to check if an iterator is valid. You always want to compare an iterator to another iterator and check if they are the same or not the same. And in general, what we're going to have on a um, container, like a linked list, 
we're going to have at the begin and the end iterator. The begin iterator is the first valid iterator inside the container, while the end iterator is the first invalid iterator on the container. As you have seen while we iterated or through that function, you could see that the first invalid iterator was an iterator that holds the null pointer. So what we should implement in our um, linked list is we should implement the function end, which returns an iterator which internally has a null pointer. So what you would want to do is you would want to implement a, a inline iterator end, and this one should now return an iterator with a null pointer in here, or since this is the default constructor, you could just default construct an iterator, which is like the end iterator, which is kind of like the, the end that we would have, which would now would give us an int begin and an it end, and the it end would be equal to end. And now what you really would want to do is uh, you would take your begin iterator and you would increment this as long as the begin iterator is not equal to the end iterator. However, you can see that we can't compare iterators. Why can't we compare iterators? Well, because the class iterator has not implemented that. And this is where we are going to get to the second rule that you need to implement on iterators. And this is the comparison of iterators. Now, comparison of iterators, they work by just writing operators. Uh, previously, we have like written this forward and backward function. Normally, you could delete them, right? You wouldn't need to have a forward and backward function on an iterator. And in general, people tend to not write them. However, I personally like to write them because code duplication um, and what I would also do is I would flag them as inline so I will tell the compiler I'm fine if these are real function calls but that one should at least be inline now this one this one like a three liner this is something that I tend to not inline and if I don't inline the, this operator I don't inline that one it's just how I personally roll with code consistency and stuff but yeah the idea is um, that these one are just written so that I don't have code duplication in here however if we just have the comparison operator we can just write them plainly in here so what we want to do is want to have an operator equal equal to compare them to another and I want to compare them to a const uh, iterator other and what the comparison is going to do it's just going to return that the others m element m element equals m element so if the pointers are the same then this one is going to return true and now you would think right if I have the equal equal implemented the not equal shouldn't be a problem because the language can do this and in general this is the case however I don't know why sometimes it works and I was really uh, confused that it's a certain project where I've written this it does not work you can actually see that it tries to um, automatically convert them however you can see that it has a rewritten expression that's valid not x equal equal y or a synthesized expression you can see that the syntax here is completely the same but you can see that it's like x equal equal y or y equal equal x and yeah it's 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 really not good and it's a bit bad that this uh, is not working like it should um i think there is a way around that by um moving this away from here there's a would be a way to write this like globally and uh would do something i think maybe you can do this with static i'm not quite sure we're going to try this out static pool uh left hand side and right hand side this might be a way around this issue i'm really this is now like just me fooling around uh and trying to do like rhs and lhs but i think this is not gonna alias here because it's inside the class so what we would really need to do is we um, would need to add this friendly keyword friend to that and the keyword friend is something people try to avoid if you add this friend bad things happen friend is kind of like putting this function into the global namespace and if you put this into the global namespace i think in theory this should now work yeah you can see that this now works this is some odd stuff that's going on this is now really like a friend static pool i don't think that friend static is a thing is it a thing does it compile i think it does compile because friend is basically the same thing that you would do with static. So if you write friend, it does no longer have access to the instance of that object. So really a friend static bool is kind of like telling it, this is a static function. It's not dependent on the instance. It's the left-hand side of the comparison and the right-hand side of the comparison. And friend is putting it into the global namespace. This is odd that you need to do this and it's not 100% clean. 
Is there a way around this? Yes, the way around is to write both op operators the equal, equal, and not equal. But I am lazy and I do hate code duplications and writing two more things. So I am using the trend keyword. It's not, I'm not 100% happy of using it here. But this makes this code compile. And if you would do this in theory, it should. If I would make a breakpoint maybe here to get each iteration. No, I'm not getting it each iteration. I need to put a breakpoint there um, to be there before I am going to increment. And if I would now take a look at the iterator begin and its element and its storage, I should end up with the cat tabby. At the next iteration, I should end up with the dog Oscar. Then I should have two more Oscars. Oscar. Oscar, and then we should be out of here. Now I double click the a bit too often, but the idea is let's uh, do it again. We have like the tabby, and next iteration we have an Oscar. Nope, expand this Oscar, another Oscar, another Oscar, and then we are out of that loop. And you can see now that we now actually can use the iterator to iterate over the whole contents of the list. Now the main goal of, 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 of that what we are doing here is to actually replace our for loop that we had here. So let's actually replace the for loop by writing a for loop. So let's write this for loop. We're going to have an iterator here. This iterator is going to be called it and it's going to be equal to ll begin and actually I shouldn't call this one ll. We're going to change this in a second. So ll begin and iterator is not equal to ll end and the iterator is incremented by calling plus plus iterator and if we write this like that we should now be able to actually iterate over it and now the only thing left to do is to remove that from here because the incrementation is already done here. You can see that this one is quite big so with iterators I always tend to use the auto keyword to just yeah, make this a bit more accessible and have like ll begin ll end now actually let me replace this ll with like calling this like uh, pets the linked list shall now be called pets and no longer uh, ll for linked list so that the syntax is a bit better now the only thing left to do is actually um, again make the syntax here work with that um, with that SCDC out let me actually first remove the, the, the index here because that index is no longer gonna be there so I do want to have this like that now the only thing that you can see is that now I no longer be able to access it could I access it by the iterator no I can't would I be able to implement this operator to uh, access an array by um, by like the iterator as a parameter here yes it would work but it's not really the point the point is actually that you can um, access the data of the iterator from within the iterator so really what you would like to have is would like have an, like an inline T reference function data and this data function would then like return um, uh, return m element uh, storage to actually gain access to the data there and since we would have const correctness we would say like const t data const and then we would have like access to the data there and now what I could do is I could call the data function of the iterator so I could say it data to gain access to the data of the iterator and dereference it. However, as always, there is a, a convention on how you do it with operators. Now, how do you do it with operators? Well, there is the dereference operator, which is um, the same operator how you dereference a pointer. And the iterator is kind of like a pointer. It's an object that you move along, but really it is like a capsulation of that element pointer and uh, it's capsuled with operators functions and stuff but really the iterator is an element pointer so it would just make sense to have like a dereference operator defined on an iterator which gains so access to the element storage and this is why um, we're going to write an operator here it's going to be the t reference operator star which stands for dereferencing which is going to return data here, so calling the function. And here as well, we're going to have a const version and a non const version. So const const to have access to the data here. And now instead of calling the data function, what we actually do is we dereference the iterator. Now you can see that we have a double dereferenciation here. The double dereferenciation is required because. Um, the first dereferenciation is going to get ourselves the dereferenciation of the iterator, so gaining access to the storage. And the storage is a pet pointer. And to actually print this and not printing the pointer, we need a pet pointer. If I would remove this one, we would print the pointer, which would give us like um, 
a few pointers in here. Let me make a breakpoint there. And if I would do this like that, you can see that we have four pointers stored. So a pointer to a cat and then three times a dog pointer. And the idea here is that we need um, double dereferenciation to get away from the pointer here. And if we run this like that, you would see that we now get like Tabby Oscar Oscar. And then if we continue on, we get again uh, Tabby Oscar Oscar with one Oscar removed. Now let's actually remove a few of these Oscars so that we have like unique elements in here and everything is good. And then we could like copy over this loop iteration over the uh, other iteration down here as well. And we should get like the same output, but um, yeah, written in a bit of a different style. So Tabby Oscar Tabby, that's all good. And everything is uh, is there. Now the only thing that uh, is left to do is show you why the hell we did not capitalize our begin and end function. Well, we did not capitalize them because actually the C++ language is quite smart. You can see that we have this syntax of for loop with iterators. And this syntax of for loop that is used here on iterators is actually used quite a lot. And what they have come up on the C++ standard committee that they always like defining the new language features, they have come up with a range for loop. So what is a range for loop? I don't know if we already talked about this, but if we would have like an array X, which has eight elements in here, and you would store like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you could iterate over this by writing like four and I equals zero, I smaller eight, I plus plus, and do like in, this is just a little dirty hack. It's like solution A, which prints like then X at I, and it something like SCD Endl, and this is something that you could do. Or what you could also do on the uh, on the standard library is to have a, a range-based for loop. So for uh, each integer um, i instead of x, you could directly say std c out solution b of uh, i actually in this case std end. So what you can do is instead of having i like as a running index or i as an iterator going in here, you can directly like alias this i, this index, to the actual type and use this range-based for loop. In this case, it's easy because it's a static array on the stack. So what the compiler can do, it knows how big the array is and it knows how to replace the for loop. It's just a different syntax behind the scenes. It's still like this range-based loop, which goes from 0 to 8, and then with the access to the array. But in terms of the syntax, it is way cleaner. You don't need to access the array, and everything is good. Now you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8. Both solutions work the same. Now the only thing that, that that's going to go on here, if I would change i in that loop, so for example, if I would duplicate that one, move that above here, and say something like i equals 0, if I would say, or not x, i equals zero, if I would do something like that, it would of course work, but you would see that it does not influence the call. Um, you can still see that on A it's one to eight and on B it's one to eight because the I is not being modifiable. If I would do this with a reference, which is actually working on these range-based loops, you can actually say, hey, give me actually a reference to the elements in the array. If I would do it like that, with a reference here, you can see that all are zero. I don't know, I think pointers are not possible because we can just gain access to the element stored in here or a reference to the element to have a modifiable uh, version. Or what you could also do is like do a const reference, which would gives you a reference and not the actual value, especially important if you have like structures stored uh, or classes stored in arrays. If you would do like a const reference, you can't modify it, but you can read it and you don't need to copy the data around because Guess it or not, if I do it like that, it's going to copy the values around. These are like range-based for loops. I think we had them already. I'm not quite sure, so I've just quickly revisit them here. And the thing is that actually, if you write a container and you provide the begin and end functions, as well as the possibility to increment an iterator and dereference an iterator, um, you actually have the uh, option to use uh, range-based loops here as well. So what I could do is I could say, all right, I have pet pointers installed in here, pet. And I want to get them from pets. And now you can see that we actually have like this pet pointer in here. And I could now use like this pet pointer, like a normal pointer that I would have used. Could also say like it's a cons pet pointer because I don't want to modify them. Cons pet pointer pet. And I want to get them out of the pets. And I could print the pets. And you would see that this syntax now is looking really, really clean. And remember, this is not a built-in type. This is a completely type, a complete class implemented by ourselves. It's our linked list. But we have provided this begin function, which returns an iterator. We have provided the end function which returns an iterator and it is amazing it works right um, if I run this printing 
the same prints that we had. Tabby, Oscar, then removing one to Oscar, just a Tabby. So yeah, this one down here is still the same, but really it's 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 so nice to do. You can actually do like a whole out a full outro here, which is actually now this outro is if I would hover over that, a pet manager pet pointer. So you could boil this this printing down to such a simple syntax, which is like iterating with iterators and doing a hell of a lot of stuff behind the scenes that you can't even like see in front of your eyes because, well, what it's doing, it's like Tabby Oscar, Tabby Oscar. In, in, in Behind the scenes, what it's really doing, it's it's doing a hell of a lot of stuff. I would maybe be able to actually show you what's going on here. If I have F5 in here and go to the disassembly, you can actually see that it is like... Um, it is calling like the iterator auto class in it too, which is actually creating an iterator uh, that is empty. Then it's creating, calling like the begin function on the linked list. Then um, it is again calling this iterator initialization and it's calling the end function of the iterator. It is calling the iterator's operator plus plus in here. It is calling the operator dereference. So really what's happening under the hood, it is still calling the same thing that we have done. We're still dereferencing the iterator. We are still incrementing the iterator. We are creating the iterator with begin. We are creating the iterator with end. So it's still doing the same things that we had previously. Still doing the same, but the difference is that our syntax on how we write our code is way more simpler to read. I mean, I personally am not a fan of an auto there because auto pet from pets, especially with your types, are more complicated. It's not a good thing. What I would write is I would write a pet. And in this case, because I'm just reading the pet, is I would always write this like that. So cons pet point a pet from pets makes your code more verbose. It's looking a bit cleaner. So that's what I tend to do here. And then it's converted to a reference and printed. That's what's happening there. And this is how I would do this. It's it's a bit cleaner if you do it like that. But the idea behind it, it's the same. And now that we have implemented iterators, we can actually now provide the big five on our linked list. All right, so let's go in and implement the big five here so that we are good. Now, I want to change a few things um, before I'm going to do the big five. First of all, I actually want to remove the uh, destructor. I um, want to factor this code out into a dedicated clear function. So we have an erase function. I want to have a void clear and the clear function shall clear all data. If we are clearing, we need to make sure that the first one is set to null pointer then as well because the object shall be usable after that and the count is set to zero here. And then what I want to do is I want to cl call clear from the destructor. This is going to be in my end of what's coming next. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to support a default constructor, but I also want to support a copy constructor, and I also want to support a move constructor. Now, um, moving is going to be quite easy. First of all, let me do this with initializer list. My first is going to be others first. Uh, no, not count first. I don't know why you tend to do this badly. And my count is going to be my others count here. This is going to make things a bit better. And then the only thing that I need to do is I need to clear the other one. Because the other one is after that an empty container. Because we have taken over ownership and that's good for moving. Uh, copying is a bit more sophisticated. Um, copying is actually quite sophisticated because we need to traverse the other list. We could do this now with a for in our iterators. However, our iterators currently only work for um, uh, for normal um, non-const instances of a linked list. However, if we are using a linked list here, it is actually const and we are no longer able to access the iterators. So what we really want to do is we want to actually work with the elements. So for auto pointer element equals other m first uh, element exists element equals element um, element next like that. Yeah. So in general, just like an, a little iteration of the elements. And what I then want to do is I want to actually append the elements um, storage to just append the data over to my list uh, and this should be good. I don't know why you are not finding the right overload. Um, do you want to, you should be the const t reference. There should be const t reference, but yeah, um, should be good. Uh, this should now copy over the list, the element to our list. And yeah, let's actually, no, let's actually first implement the the assign function, so operator equals const uh, other 
and um, ampersand ampersand no except for move now the structure of them is going to be quite similar if uh, this not equal other to prevent self assign which in theory should the compiler already do but i'm not quite sure of this i learned that i need to uh, that i should prevent self assign this might not be correct in cpp20 um and what i want to do is i want to call my destructor uh, here and then I want to call a constructor again calling the constructor again can be done like this writing new opening the brackets calling this to basically tell the compiler uh, call the, the, the constructor for this current instance so it's saying the existing instance and calling the constructor again of the linked list with the other one which is just redirecting this and me being lazy same thing we're gonna do here as well but uh, oh, down here we need to do the SCD move. And now we should be good and have all the sign operators implemented. Let's actually try them out if they work by creating a, a second array. And the first idea is to have like a second equals paths, which should work here. Let's make a breakpoint there and there and see what we got. Which should give us a seconds array that is empty. Yeah, you can see that we have two in here and second one is empty. And if I click continue, you can see that the second one is now having two elements and the first one as well. Second one should now have, uh, should be different pointers. Yes, they are. The first one is, should be pointing to the cat, which it is. And the next one should be pointing to the dog and should not have a next one. So yeah, the copying worked actually. Now, to quickly verify that it's working differently as well. We should also be able to, can I do this like that? Can I create pets from there? I think yes. We should already get, let's get us started with pets in there. Left to right, right. No, it's right to left. Okay, so that's interesting that you can do this like that. Uh, maybe let's do it properly. Backhand from pets to copy this over. And this one should do get, give us the same result, and it does. Yeah, it does. You can see, pets, next, all stored, all stored, all looking good to the same um, linked lists. Now, the only thing interesting is the std move. Let's try this out for the pets here. The sign operator should then also work because especially we are using the constructor. So how does move work? Move works by now having the pets empty and everything in the second one. And actually, if I do this maybe before I run that one, you can see that the pointer here is 9D49E060. And you get the same pointer here as well. So the data is reused and not uh, copied or reallocated. So this one was fast instead of like the copy, which is slow. And in general, what I should be also able to do, let's test this quickly out. Let's append on uh, the second one, a few uh, Oscars, Oscar, and then say second equals move of pets. And let's append a few things and the idea would be that the second list is filled with data at that point and having like some some odd pointer there like the ea50 and this has the ec30 five things in there and now this should change to the ec30 and just two elements and this one should be empty so it's reused the clear function should have been called and we have some issue in our code where is the issue in our code pets count yeah okay now because we are calling yeah okay um because pets is empty and if we are doing count which is zero minus one we are trying to remove some odd things and this is not defined so it is actually allowed to fail there because we have uh, massacrated our pets array. Uh, not array, it's a linked list, but get the point. Right, but if I change this to that, the behavior should be the same, and it's all good, and our code works again, which is exactly what we want with iterators. And yeah, like this arrays function, I promise that we're gonna refactor that one as well. But I think this is something that you could do actually uh, on yourself. You could try how to refactor them. I'm, I am currently looking for some function that can seek element pointer pointers by index. 
Uh, that would be something that might be a nice thing because the add function also, also uses them. It's actually an element pointer that you seek. Yeah, maybe you you can can try to come up with a solution on your own on how you could refactor this code and make it a bit nicer. But I think for now I'm actually quite um, happy with how our linked list turned out with like the iterator, the elements, and how they all get together, how you can use them nicely. So yeah, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and have a nice day. Bye.